kicked off on his way. With Gary and Rory is a jockey who says his pet hates are sitting around being cold and being late. Or to put it more succinctly, virgin trains. <laughs> Thank you to Tory. <laughs> On the other side, he's back and he's literally just got off the plane from Pakistan where he received a rapturous welcome from the Pakistani Dyslexic Association. <laughs> David Gower. <laughs> With David and Jonathan is a comedian who presents the Northern Ireland section of Comic Relief, or as it's known over there, Orange Nose Day. <laughs> Patrick Kilty. <laughs> we kick off the show with our What's Going On round. Gary, Rory and Frankie, it's Wimbledon against Gillingham from a few weeks back for you. <laughs> now, it's not the match itself we're interested in so much as the press conference that followed it. Bonsoir, mesdames, messieurs. Ce soir, Monsieur Burton parle seulement en français, en allemand et en italien. Si vous avez, si vous avez des questions pour Monsieur Burton dans cette langue, ce n'est pas un problème. Mais si vous ne parlez pas français, italien ou allemand, cette interview, c'est fini, c'est terminé. That was Wimbledon manager Terry Burton alongside his translator Tony White. So why the press conference in French? Hoy esta tarde, Nick, señor Lirica y señor Torre, vamos a responder a preguntas solamente en español, ruso, alemán y quizá Northern Irish. <laughs> Definitely about effort as a foreign. I, I think I should start. They wouldn't say I speak Italian. You can actually tell when Frankie went from English to Italian then. <laughs> Now, um, he's talking French. Now, most football managers talk bollocks, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> if you're talking bollocks, tell us about that horse you were riding in Italy, uh, Frankie. Yeah, you... exactly. Yesterday I went to Rome and uh, I rode a horse called Uccellone, what means big dick. <laughs> <laughs> and it won by a length, apparently. <laughs> uh, I think everyone will be with me when I say that, frankly, it's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's wrong to see French, the language of poetry, the language of love, spoken by hairy-arsed football managers. <laughs> they should speak the proper language of football, swearing, grunting, sick as a parrot, over the moon. She told sick me she was 16, officer. <laughs> <laughs> That's all they need. Sheer <laughs> poetry. Some comment on what's really the English sport is the number of foreigners in it. What do you think about that, Frankie? <laughs> I'll tell you what, these farmers in this country should all be kicked out. They would get it. Is he being sort of uh, making some ironic statement that if he were a foreigner, he might get the England job? Mm, sort of. Do you say that you've got to be a foreigner? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, give, I'll give you three job. points for that, yes. Terry yeah. Burton went on to explain himself at the time. I just wanted to show that uh, if, uh, if we do get a foreign coach as, uh, as, as the England manager, what sort of problems you'd have when you've got to start asking questions? So he was showing what the future might hold for the press if England had a foreign manager. And of course England did appoint Sven Joran Eriksson as manager. And he's now brushing up on his English phrases, such as the third Albanian goal was clearly offside, <laughs> mathematically we're still in with a chance, and deal me in, lads. <laughs> it was revealed recently in the press that Sven Joran Eriksson had never heard of the Sunderland and England left-back Michael Gray. The really bad news is that he has heard of Gary and Phil Neville. <laughs> David, Jonathan and Patrick, have a look at this. Choking dog. Do it right. This is Tiger Woods, uh, the man with the world's longest drive. No, 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 mine's at least five miles. <laughs> <laughs> and then you get to the gatehouse, and then there's another ten miles. 
<laughs> you could be burgled during the petrol crisis, could you? Because people couldn't get to our get there. <laughs> <laughs> and we should make amends for you, because, uh, make allowances, because you're back from the long haul. And did you get up and you walked around plenty on the oh, place? Yes, you know, you've got to be careful. Place. You've got to oh, yeah. be careful. When you stay still for a long while, you get that deep vein thrombosis. Although it never bothered you when you were batting, did it? So <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's the goal for Ronnie Wood, and he's playing. What's he doing there? He's <laughs> tied <laughs> feet, something like that. Isn't it? Is, he, is that the uh, pro celebrity uh, try to hit Lineker with a golf ball event? Because <laughs> we'd like to sign up if it yeah, is. Yeah. If any, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm going to see that clip again. Can we have a look yeah. at it again? Mate? Because the way you look at him, Gary, you look, look a bit like the way a young girl gets all excited when Westlife were in a lift. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's, it's like, like girly. Oh, you you asked him for me. Yeah. Go on. <laughs> um, I know it, it, it was a charity event, well, wasn't it? It's a charity event, uh, which Gary was at, obviously. And yeah. the deal was, if I remember correctly, if he could get a hole in one, they'd give a million to charity. And in the end, he didn't get a hole in one, but they gave quite a substantial stump sum anyway, I believe. Yeah, I'll give you three points. That you're Thank close you. yeah. enough. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was a Save the Children event hosted by our very own Gary here, in which Tiger Woods tried to repeat the famous baseball shot from one of his Nike ads and failed dismally. Now, according to Gary, when he was introduced to Tiger Woods, the world's top golfer smiled and politely asked him when he retired from professional football. Yeah. I suppose that was just after he said, Oi, Dumbo, two sugars, please. <laughs> The Sunday Telegraph recently asked Gary for a list of sporting geniuses who have defined the modern era. The list was Diego Maradona, Michael Jordan, Tiger Woods, and David Gower was also asked to compile a list. <laughs> and so, at the end of that round, David's team have three points and oh, Gary's team have three well. points. Up. We're looking for the reasons behind a pair of celebrations. Gary's team, it's Sydney Olympic swimming for you, and the dramatic final moments of the men's 100 metres freestyle relay. Gorb's coming back. I can't believe he's going to do this. He is going to do it. He's done it. Oh, my goodness me. I cannot believe he's done that. That is the most fantastic swim I have ever seen in my whole life. It's a new world record. Now, that was Ian Thorpe leading the Australian team to victory over the Americans, but why that <laughs> celebration? So that's what happened to Lee Hurst. <laughs> <laughs> well, can we see that still again? Can we see yeah. that? The yeah, the end. Still? Who says they're not descended from convicts? Then? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody! <laughs> yeah, you know what? I think that's a terrible... They're victims of a terrible practical joke, because someone must have put Imac in the water instead of Chloe. <laughs> <laughs> Shorts now, you'll find a couple of peeled plums and a naked mole wax. <laughs> I tell you, if you check out the plug at the end, it will look like an animal school. It had the lady shave out. <laughs> you swim there, uh, Gary, because you've got a notoriously hairless body. He's yeah, completely hairless. <laughs> Frankie swims in the bath. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't, I haven't done the long way yet, the volley going across. <laughs> sort of entertaining the crowd until the British team finished. <laughs> <laughs> Is it actually a jive at the Americans? I'll give you one point. It's quite difficult to get it exactly. The celebration was the Australian team's pointed response to Gary Hall Jr., one of the American swimmers, mm -hmm. who'd said before the race, we will smash the Australians like guitars. Hence the air guitars in the direction of the American team. The Americans in that race were wearing brand new costumes designed to mimic the way a shark moves through water. Unfortunately, it backfired when they were instinctively attracted to the helpless threshing of the British team back in ninth place. <laughs> the British team's costume, incidentally, is designed to mimic the skin of a rusty pram. <laughs> the winner of that last lap, Ian Thorpe, is six foot five with enormous size 17 feet. So whether he's standing up or lying down, he's still taller than Frankie. <laughs> So, David's team, it's a sport we don't often feature in our celebrations round, football. Here's Arsenal's Thierry Henry scoring the goal of the season so far, made all the better by the fact it was scored against Manchester United. Oh, that is masterful by Thierry Henry. French goalkeeper amused, French manager applauds, French goalscorer delighted. 
Let's Some, see someone's called him on who wants to be a millionaire. <laughs> right. <laughs> what was Wordsworth? Was he a painter, a hairdresser, a poet, or a Formula One driver? And that, that was actually a question, right? On who wants to be a millionaire. On who wants to be a millionaire. Is it really? Yeah, and the woman said, can I go 50-50? <laughs> <laughs> Right, so she right, took it away and she left, he, she was left with poet and Formula One driver and she said, can I phone a friend? Yeah. <laughs> and the friend was Thierry Henry. <laughs> exactly. <yeah. laughs> and, he, and he took the call on his wrist. <laughs> there it goes, Wordsworth! Or is he, is he boasting to the other teammates that he's pulled last night, even though he doesn't realise that calling a phone sex line doesn't really count? <laughs> Which, by the way, I called one of those last week, purely for research. And the girl, the girl on the other line asked to say hello to Rory. She <laughs> said, all the girls who work on 0800 who's been a naughty, hairy boy wanted to say hello to Rory. <laughs> and they also said, if you're seeing that Frankie de Tory, all the girls from 0800 bucked me like a bronco little man. <laughs> and they said, and while we've got you on the line, can you please ask David Gower to stop calling? <laughs> I'm afraid, Thank you. I'm afraid the demand for 0800, I used to be quite good at cricket, isn't really big enough. <laughs> Try the Samaritans. <laughs> when you're in Lahore, right? Like, you're a long yes, way yeah. from home. Yeah, true. There's and you're a man I missed, like any I missed, other. I did miss you. You get the punker wallet to come in and give you a favour? Because <laughs> I've, I've never been, I've never been to the beautiful, what's it called, the Emerald Isle? I've never been to it. It's all right, your wife will never no, see this. <laughs> too much, too much. <laughs> She hasn't seen this for a while either. <laughs> What's that one? Just a week. I've got an idea what that might be. Yeah, it's the, it's, it's the, the What's popular that? beer advert. Is, is, it, the beer is, advert? is it a reference to the popular? Very irritating. Yeah. Well, you, you've, been a, you've been away, so obviously. Beer? I don't mention beer. I've been in Pakistan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't know what lager is, would you? It's a very popular amber coloured libation, sir. Yeah. <laughs> we never replace port, what? but it's quite refreshing. <laughs> <laughs> He's still no idea what you're talking what? about. What? He's been away. <laughs> There's a beer, there's a beer Patrick, for a Patrick, Budweiser. Patrick, Patrick, just imagine yeah. it's okay. Christmas, right? You've got an elderly relative, they don't know what's going on. <laughs> don't worry, just talk across <laughs> him. He's not going to know. <laughs> yes, I'll give you three so points. That's 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 Here is Thierry Henry himself with the answer. I said to him, um, if I scroll, I will do the, the you know, what's up, so... Hello? So what's up, B? So it was all to do with Budweiser's was up ad. Even Manchester United manager Sir Alex Ferguson gave Henri's goal his highest praise. It was rubbish and offside, he enthused. <laughs> Actually, we should say, for legal reasons, that Sir Alex didn't say that. That's just our joke, Sir Alex, sir. So please don't sue us. There you are, viewers. Your BBC, scared of no one. <laughs> Budweiser's last ad campaign was based on three fantastically talented frogs, much like the current Arsenal side. <laughs> and so, at the end of that round, Gary's team have four points and David's team have six. Time now for Author Author, where we read out a pair of sporting quotes and ask who said them. Gary's team, here's yours. Some people come to Old Trafford, and I don't think they can even spell the word football, never mind understand it. They have had a few drinks and prawn sandwiches, and they don't realise what is going on out on the pitch. It's about someone at Old Trafford who can't spell football, so I presume it's David Beckham, is it? <laughs> Man United prawns. Probably have a different dressing on every week, wouldn't they? Yay! Yay! Prawns, they're yeah. bright pink, bulging eyes, and full of crap. Something to do with Peter Schmeichel. <laughs> <laughs> it's about corporate hospitality, yes. isn't it? Which is, yeah. um, which is started at racing, wasn't it? Racing started corporate hospitality, wasn't it? Yes. Uh, well, you'd yeah. certainly avoid the burgers at a racehorse meeting, wouldn't you, eh? <laughs> Straight off the course, they're very fresh. <laughs> Fantastic drumsticks, sir, as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> Corporate hospitality. <clears throat> I think it was um, everyone's favourite midfield, wasn't it, Roy Keane? Three points, well done, <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was, of course, Roy Keane talking about the kind of Manchester United fans who occupy the executive boxes. 
Roy Keane's uncle recently won £2.8 million on the lottery. If Roy wanted to earn that kind of money, he'd have to play football every day for the rest of his week. <laughs> David's team, this one's for you. First, he cheated. Then, he started abusing me. My code of honour allows me to kill a man who insults me. Nevertheless, I would like to think of him as a friend. I would like to welcome him into my house as my personal guest. The other day, I saw him sitting in a car. He said, oh God, not you again, and drove off. Is it uh, Les Dennis about Neil Morrissey? <laughs> <laughs> oh God, not you again. Was it David Icke? <laughs> <laughs> Stop bothering me! <laughs> Is it George Harrison about the bloke that broke into his house? <laughs> George's wife, hats off to she, her. She went yeah, for a yeah. big she time. Yeah, yeah. Give me the poker. With a poker? Yeah. Yeah. Or was it a candlestick in the library? <laughs> <laughs> Get the Sergeant Pepper in the library <laughs> with a sit-up. <laughs> Can I just, just interrupt there? Oh, yeah. so I've got an author, author of my own here, which was in the Sunday Times, actually. I watched England's first innings on television and it bored me. It's all very well for David Gow to talk a lot of crap. <laughs> well, come on, any one and of us can say that. that. You yeah. said that. You won't know, will you, because you've been in Pakistan. You know, you said that twat Gary Sobers, isn't it? Oh, it is, isn't it? Yeah. Sir <laughs> Garfield. He couldn't so. play, could he? <laughs> so. <laughs> Talented <laughs> bastard. <laughs> so, better at cricket. <laughs> <laughs> Is this is the is umpire it? that had a row with Mike Gatting? And his name is? Shakur Rana. Three points! There you go. It was the Pakistani umpire Shakur Rana talking about former <laughs> England captain Mike Gatting. The altercation between Shakur Rana and Mike Gatting was broadcast around the world after technicians inadvertently left the microphones on. It's a mistake we've been making with David Gower's mic for 10 series. <laughs> It's just not fair, and it's going to come a time when we won't take it anymore from you. Yeah, but not this week, is it? No, not this no, week. That's right. <laughs> you know, Some of the England players didn't want to go back on the field at all, but they were ordered to by the people who paid their wages. They're Indian bookmakers. <laughs> Actually, to be fair, that was only David. <laughs> and so, at the end of that round, Gary's team have seven points, and just David's team advice, have nine. Can I just make a note of your lawyer's name there, Nick? <laughs> Do you have one? No, obviously No, not. of course I haven't got a lawyer, no. I haven't got any. No tailor, no lawyer? No. <laughs> no candlestick maker. No. <laughs> but I've got no. quite a good cricket batting average. Who? <laughs> time now. Time now for our regulars to touch up a complete stranger as we play Field the Sportsman. Gary and Rory, you're up first. <laughs> OK, light bulbs on, please. And can we have our first mystery guest, please? You know, feeling charitable, if you would like to swap with our field of sportsmen, <laughs> David and I will happily volunteer. I can't see the much, Keith. <laughs> no, I don't mind! <laughs> and your time starts now. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, what is that? <laughs> Christ oh my. What's the something? <laughs> what is it? I don't know what it is. It's an object. <laughs> is it Tigger? <laughs> Tigger. <laughs> Tigger. Oh, yes. Oh, Gary. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, what have here? you done to deserve this? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Not today, Gary. <laughs> Have you brought any cash? <laughs> 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 
You look so happy, Will. <laughs> 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 I, mean, I was just thinking, tissues. talk about dangerous sports being a young girl on a, on a trampoline with a blindfolded Rory <laughs> McGrath. <laughs> <laughs> David and Jonathan, could you move to your places, please? Uh, do you mind if I wait a moment? <laughs> I've been in <laughs> It was a bit much after that week what? in Pakistan. <laughs> Patrick's looking! <laughs> How sad is that? <laughs> and can we have our second mystery guest? Start your tampering now. <laughs> I wouldn't go in there I'll if I were you. Send your name on the. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 no, cam on. Top of is there a cam on? Top go that way. Go that way. Is, is, it, is, is it, it Dwight York? What's this? <laughs> if, this is, if this is a video camera, David, you know you're asking what I wanted for Christmas? <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll tell you what, you want a bit of hands-free action. <laughs> yeah, three women was, hanging on a... Is it Jack Nicholson's roulette table? <laughs> <laughs> you spin around and whether it stops you, pleasure the lady. <laughs> Is this, um, come on, girls, I'm going with you off. Is this a diving team of some description? Yes, normal. <laughs> British, yeah, British, 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 women. Yes, Alan, three points. Yeah, I'm happy here, though. <laughs> Hello. Oh, yeah, that, I'm sorry about the desk, please. You're never sort of part of the show. Oh, look at that. So, are all right. Yeah, you were just in there. The British women skydiving team. <laughs> Gary's team have seven points oh. and David's team have 12. Yeah. We head for the finishing post by playing the name game. The leaders go first, which is David's team. Could you pass those on to Jonathan, please? 90 seconds to get as many names as you can, starting now. OK, uh, this is the Australian swimmer with the great big feet. We were talking about Murray Ian on. Thorpe. Ian Thorpe, congratulations. <laughs> Same last name, this bloke is a cricketer. Uh, Graham uh, Thorpe. Thorpe. Yeah, well done. Well done. OK, this Thank one. Um, OK, second name would be the song. You know the song? Me and Mrs. Jones. Mrs. Jones. Yeah, and first name, Maid, Robin Hood like Maid. Marion Marian Jones. Jones, well done. Uh, this one, oh, first name, he was... seriously. I know, he is. First one, yeah. he was uh, something golden. He was a superhero Flash bloke. Flash Gordon. Yeah, and the second name, remember the bionic man? His name was Steve... Austin. Yeah, wow, fantastic. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but not funny! Who cares? We want to win! <laughs> second name. You know, after the show, Roy always has a few drinks and he gets a little bit... Pissed. Yeah. <laughs> Take it down a bit for the kids watching. Uh, a little bit like when you have Mary. Mary. Yeah, Mary. Okay. And the first name is um, Chris. Is, is Catherine. Catherine. Okay. Oh, oh no, 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 no! 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 There's a Duran Duran song. Her name is Rio. That's it. And the second name is uh, Ferdinand. Ferdinand. Yeah, well done, you. 
All right, this one. If you were trying, if you were an angler trying to catch an arsehole, you would be Sorry. this. You would be a. You would be a. Looking a bum. You would be no. Second name is Jesus. Does this to men. Uh, so, creatures with a big net. Uh, I will make you of oh, men. Fishers, yeah, Fisher, fishers. and the first name is um, Price. Uh, Alison. I can't do wine, but can I? Okay. No, uh, uh, no not Alison. Don't give me Alison. God, you are jet lagged. Don't just shut up. <laughs> <laughs> First name would be a slang oh. word for someone you didn't like, and you use stupid, uh, use scouse, right, uh, 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 Al Carter used Stephen to say, you bastard. stupid scouse, Stephen bastard, you stupid scouse, <laughs> twat, twat. you stupid scouse, no, well, well, twat wasn't even invented back then. It's, it's you always, stupid scouse, always been there. It was just called yeah. stupid scouse. Yeah. Very good, Jonathan. Very, very good. Move back to 18. Uh, can we take one point be? off, though, obviously, for saying Catherine? Yeah, no one noticed. We wasted time. <laughs> <laughs> they need 11 to win, and I know for a fact Rory still got his mind on that trampoline. Yeah. So that... <laughs> Not just his mind. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so Andrew, time starts. Now, no, I think this is the famous crustaceanist Manchester United midfielder. Roy Keane. Very good. Uh, Ex-jockey and our broadcaster. Roy Cost. We we go. We go. We go. Yeah, yeah. Here's another. Uh, <laughs> this is uh, a Pakistani umpire who had a row with Mike. Shakur Rana. This is a racehorse trainer who shares a name with an 007 a, a, a special agent Bond. who's licensed Bond. to kill. And his, his first initial is, you know when you used to take a lot of heroin? <laughs> <laughs> What letter was that then? H. Oh, <laughs> well done. <laughs> From the uh, jockey there. Uh, <laughs> this is, this is um, French for Christopher. Christophe. Very good. And secondly, you know when you're having a bonk and you, you get you, you get this over. Leg over. Leg over. And right, if you accidentally got it stuck in. <laughs> leg in. That would be leg in. Now, if you had to extract it. Leg out. Oh, very. <laughs> Like he used to play for um, uh, oh, Genesis. <laughs> Phil Collins? <laughs> no, um, Angel. Second name's an Angel. Go, Peter Gabriel. Very good indeed. Um, this is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> One to you, Francis. Um, the Italian for uh, Peter George. Uh, Piero Giorgio. Close enough, <laughs> I can get <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The Italian for good times. Uh, good time <laughs> Von Kempke. Thank you. Are you? I'm not Italian. <laughs> <laughs> or a jockey. <laughs> so, <laughs> so David's team had got 17, but Gary's team only managed to get 13. So this week's winner yes. is David's so. team. <laughs> Jonathan and Patrick, we're all off to rush David to the airport, even though his plane back isn't for a week. <laughs> My name's Nick Hancock. They think it's all over. It is now. David Gower, David Gower, David Gower, David Gower, David Gower. I thought I'd give him a few quick mentions there, as he quite often gets left out. And that's only right, because he quite often got out when he played cricket. Ooh, the smell of camembert. That can only mean one thing. The partridge is next. <laughs>